Hello my crafty lovelies. Um, I just thought I'd share with you how I made some of my mini pots. Um, so these are some of the mini pots that I made and this is my little potter's wheel which my son bought me I think off of eBay. It's about 45 to 50 dollars. Um, it comes with a USB plug and basically I just use the adapter off of my phone charger to plug it in and um, it works perfectly so and you can adjust the speed too so these are some of the pots that I've made <laughs> I actually quite like this with the well on the bottom and um, I like this one where you can actually see the texture on the side too now I hope I've got enough light in here I'm just using the sunlight um, skylight in the kitchen at the moment so and this one I've smoothed all off and I've just used a wet paintbrush to do that and uh, this one here is one my daughter made where you actually open it up and then close it so that you have the bubble inside and when it's dry you just cut it in half and you end up with this little interesting like a tandoor cooker and I've used the same technique here on this jug but I didn't actually cut it open I just left it so that it looked like a jug with a lid on so it does have a bubble inside so that's the ones we've made uh, I'm gonna show you what I use and what I set up with So I've just got a couple of baby wipes here and I keep one on the end here just so that the machine doesn't get too dirty. I mean, unfortunately the orange clay does stain it but you've got to expect that kind of thing. I don't have many tools. I um, just use this um, plastic, like an orange stick that you get for manicures with the flat end on one end and a pointed end on the other end. I've got a whole heap of other tools but I haven't actually used <laughs> any of them very much and I found that this one actually covered everything I needed to do so I don't need any oh, sorry not the camera I've lost my camera stand at the moment so I've got a makeshift one so I just use that and this is just a cheap blade for taking the pots off afterwards and a paintbrush. I have a little bowl of water here and a container to put any excess clay in if I need to. And I keep a wet wipe there for my hand and a wet piece of absorbent paper to put the clay in so that it doesn't dry out when I'm working. So this is the air dry clay that I have. Um, it's a, just a Crayola brand one and um, I try and keep most of the stuff in there so that it stays damp oh, open it up. and I just keep a damp cloth on top of it too just to make sure it doesn't dry out so I normally grab a lump out maybe like that to start with cover the rest all up make sure the lids on properly and then I'll take a small piece off of here because you don't really need a lot for making these pots it's probably too much there but anyway um, and then I wrap the excess piece in that damp cloth and I just put it on the lid it's out of the way it's staying damp it's ready for use um, and this bit I'll just dip my fingers in the water damp it down a little bit and put it right in the middle there give it a good press and I sort of try and start with a little bit of a cone like that before I even start the machine so that's about where I start now oh, the other thing I've got is my little heat gun too We'll use that later. Just keep that out of the way. 
So I normally start this slow because with a bit of water on it, you want to you want to make it nice and soft with a bit of water on it. If it's going too fast, it'll actually spit it everywhere. So I start slowly and I press my fingers together like this and bring it back and just add a little bit of pressure so that it actually brings that right to the center as much as possible. And you can press that down a bit, do it again. Now it, the machine does slow down if you press too hard or if your clay's a little bit hard, add a little bit more water, make it nice and soft. And I find just by holding the machine and bringing my fingers in like that, I can center it nicely. So you get a little bit of a unsteadiness. We want to try and minimize that. I hope you can all see that well enough. I'm working in my kitchen at the moment. I can't get you very much higher than that. I can try. Hang on a second. Let's see how we go. Let's see if I can give you a better view. Bear with me, ladies. fingers together like that use the machine to actually steady myself don't get that too close or it gets caught and just slowly bring that Speed it up a little bit now. So there you go. Got a nice shape there. Once I've got it like that, I use my flat end on here. And you can sort of bring all this in as well. So you don't need to work this clay much because it is air dry. You can see there I've made a mess of that already. There we go. I like to bring in a little bit of an angle at the bottom there. And that way you've got something to cut under. So it's just a case of deciding how tall you want the pot. Whether you want angles. There you go, I've sped it up a bit more. There you go. And then I use the pointed end. And you don't even need to apply very much pressure just to bring it down like that. And the good thing about this, you can actually slow it down or stop it and have a look at how, how much work needs to be done on it, whether it's even at the top. See, there's a lot of residue at the top there, which I'd fix up. Add a little bit more water, makes it easier to move it. Right, go back to my flat end. And take that up and press in slightly. See, I mean, there's so many different shapes that you can do. And you can sit there and play with that for, for hours and decide how, how you want to do it. Like I said, I like to bring it in a little bit on the bottom. Like that. I'll just use my finger and that and the little stick as a guideline. And you can see that. Look at that. And if you've got too much extra clay here, it sort of gets stuck on there and spits out. So I'll just scrape that into a bowl like that. And if I need more, I can add that back on. Bring that in, up like that, and give it a little bit of shape. You can bring that down like that. 
And as you bring it down, it'll actually widen it out again. You can bring that in if you want to. Let's turn it up, give it a bit of speed. Smooth it out a little bit with our fingers. You never fuck up, excuse my language. You, you never, you never muck up with this. I mean, okay, I had that out wide. I put my finger on it and I brought it in. That that's not a that's not a mistake. That's just a change in plans. So there you go. You might get a better shape. So there you go. Bring that in like that. Look at that lovely shape. Like that. Now let's slow that down and have a look at it. So this is when you can see, okay, it needs a little bit of smoothing out there. needs a little bit of smoothing out there. Look at that lovely little jug. How easy was that? You can just get a little bit of water if you want a nice smooth finish. And run this over like that. Just a very feather light touch. There you go. Look at that lovely shape. What do you think of that? So, now what we can do, we can slow that down a little bit and have a look at it. Don't need to go too deep with your hole. You don't want to go too thin on the top either. Otherwise it will break off. So there's enough of a hole there to put flowers or something in. Oh, here come my children. Just a minute. I'm recording. Yes. Yes, I'm recording. So I'm just showing the ladies how to make a little pot. So I used to be home by four at the latest. No problem. Just so I should come and tell you. Okay, thank you. Good luck with your pot, Mum. Okay. Alright, so that's gone a little bit off the side a bit. Level that down a bit. There we go. Lovely. We go and see the shape of it there it's not too deep inside now I usually leave it at about that speed because then while it's spinning you're not overcooking it use my heat gun excuse the noise I'm usually about an inch inch and a half away from it not too close and I just do this until I can see that um, it's drying out a bit. The colour tends to change a bit, lighten. And this will make it hard enough so when I cut it off I don't actually break it or squash it, hopefully. Assuming I don't have an accident with it. So that's starting to change colour. 
and that just means that the clay will be firm enough that um, it'll tend to stay like that if I just have a little bit of a slip. So you can see the wheel is actually drying out. Now you don't want to do it too dry because I don't know what's in the clay but it tends to pop and crackle if you've made it too dry because um, it's not made to be cooked or anything like that. So if you start cooking it with a hot air gun it'll sizzle and pop and your pot will break. Right. There you go. Let's see. Now you can see just on the top there where it's dried out a little bit. The colour's changed a bit. And it's much firmer. Well, I don't press too hard, but you can feel it's it's firmer. So what I do is I just have this on a slow speed like that. Now remember once these are dried you can actually sand these back with, I just use um, fine grade on an emery board. I'll bring my knife out like that and I'll just slowly bring that under. Don't press too hard and as it cuts slides onto your blade like that. How cool is that? So that then I put onto just a tray where it can dry like that. And once that's dry we can paint it. So I hope that helps anyone that uh, wants to have a go at one of these making pots or or whatever they want to make. There's all, all sorts of choices, things that you can make. Um, someone said that they actually look like little, uh, some of my things look like uh, holders for incense cones, which is a pretty cool idea. I like all the little pots for my miniatures, obviously. So then we just go back to another piece of clay, back on there, wet that little bit and we can start again. So easy. And once you get that, the knack of just centering that to start with, it's all very light touch. And like I said, I use the air dry clay, Crayola air dry clay, a little bit of water. And like I said, three tools, three tools. This little stick, I mean, I suppose you could use a bamboo skewer and just sand one end off so that you've got a little flat end and use the point. But that's that's the only tool I use. The blade for cutting it off and a paintbrush for smoothing it down. And then I've got my hot air gun that I just use to firm it up. So let's go. Let's have another go. This one's pretty dry at the moment, so. Uh -huh. Use my flat blade, bring that in. And if I find it's spitting a little bit, I'll just put my hand on the other side, I'll just hold it. So you want to keep your hand sort of behind it there, like coming towards it. You don't want to get your fingers over here, otherwise you get pushed to the front. Um, obviously it's a right-handed wheel, so. Most of your action is done with your right hand. So there you go, I've just made this one a little bit skinnier at the bottom. Flatten it out. 
that. Bring it down a bit. Use my pointer then, make a hole. So easy. And that. A little bit wonky at the moment. But you can see that looks like a little pot. You decide halfway you're through, you don't want to do the little pot, you do something else. You can bring this back down. Play with the shapes as much as you like. I actually like some of the ones that have like the little grooves in them. And you can come down, do your little plate. There you go. Easy as that. And take a look at it. And I don't mind too much if there's a little bit of a mistake in it what have you like it's not a mistake like I said it's just a change of plans kind of like them a little bit rustic If you don't clean off your tool, you get lumps and bumps everywhere. Oh, there you go. And if you just lean that out a little bit like that, that can become wider. It can become a bigger pot. The hardest thing is centering it. Um, it's not that hard. But I mean even even now that's that's off center a little bit, but you can still make something. So there you go. I hope that helped you girls out. Enjoy your crafting. Let me know what you make. Bye.